Let's talk more about phagocytosis. We're going to try and explain this in a little bit more detail than we did over on TikTok. So stay tuned if you want a full explainer video. First things first, phagocytosis, it uses phagocytes. Now, phagocytes are a type of white blood cell. They are produced in the bone marrow. And there are different types of phagocytes. So you may hear of um, neutrophils and you may hear of macrophages. They are both examples of phagocytes which can engulf and destroy. Um, and if you're doing OCR, you have to know a little bit more about the structure of the neutrophil. Like, for example, the neutrophil, the nucleus is more of a kidney bean shape. So that's how you would recognize a neutrophil. Whereas the macrophage, the nucleus is more circular. And this just means that the neutrophil, because the nucleus is kidney bean shaped, it's a little bit more flexible. It can change shape and it can squeeze out of capillaries, for example, because of that. So these are both different types of phagocytes, but they engulf and destroy pathogens. They're part of our non-specific defense or non-specific immune response. And what that basically means is whatever the pathogen is, you know, if it's got foreign antigens on its surface, it can be destroyed by these phagocytes. Whereas if you think about your T lymphocytes and your B lymphocytes, they are specific because they have specific receptors on their cell surface membrane that will only be complementary to specific foreign antigens. Whereas this is non-specific, so it's kind of like the first line of defense or the first part of the immunity story once the foreign pathogen is in our bloodstream. Okay, so what do they do? Well, these phag phagocytes will move towards pathogens. And how do they do that? Well, the pathogens themselves might produce chemicals that attract the phagocyte to that area or even your cells that are under attack or your cells that are infected with a pathogen can produce chemicals to attract the phagocytes. For example, histamines, which you might have heard of. Histamines are produced by cells that are um, infected and those histamines can attract phagocytes over to the site of infection. So they move towards pathogens um, attracted by chemicals and that movement down a chemical gradient towards where that chemical is being produced is called chemotaxis. They can also recognize the foreign antigens on the surface of these pathogens. Now remember an antigen is usually a protein or a glycoprotein that's on the surface of a cell, but we have antigens on our cells, right? They're called self-antigens. These pathogens have antigens on their surface, which are foreign, they are non-self. They have a different tertiary structure, they're a different shape. And the phagocyte is able to recognize that the antigens on the pathogens are foreign. They are non-self and therefore that pathogen needs to be destroyed because it should not be in your body. So they recognize the foreign antigens and they can bind to the foreign antigens. And then they can begin the process of engulfing and destroying the pathogen. So we've been through this before on TikTok, so hopefully you're quite confident with this. We're also gonna do some questions this week over on TikTok, if you wanna go and check them out. But basically what happens is the phagocyte engulfs the pathogen and encloses it in a vesicle. So it's wrapping its membrane, it's extending its cell surface membrane and it's wrapping it around the pathogen. So it encloses it in a membrane bound vesicle. This would be an example of endocytosis 
which don't forget is a form of bulk transport. This vesicle, by the way, we can call it a phagosome. You don't have to, you can just call it a vesicle, but specifically its name is a phagosome. And then we've got the organelles lysosomes, which fuse with the phagosome. So the lysosomes will be in the phagocytes. They will move towards the phagosome, fuse with the phagosome, and these lysosomes will then release their hydrolytic enzymes. or their digestive enzymes. These enzymes, by the way, are called lysozymes. So you could call them lysozymes or just call them hydrolytic or digestive enzymes. So now we've got the pathogen is enclosed and engulfed in a phagosome. The lysosome has fused with the phagosome, which you can call a phagolysosome. The hydrolytic enzymes have been released or the digestive enzymes have been released and the enzymes digest or hydrolyze the pathogen. And I've said a few times, try and avoid saying break down. It's not very scientific. Don't just say destroy. It's not really A-level speak. That's what you said at GCSE. So we're going to say the hydrolytic enzymes digest or hydrolyze the pathogen. And then some phagocytes, particularly the macrophages, can become what we call antigen-presenting cells. So they can present the foreign antigens from the hydrolyzed pathogen on their cell surface membrane. Now, what can happen then, once we've got our antigen-presenting cell, our phagocyte acting as an antigen-presenting cell, a T-lymphocyte which is part of the specific immune response, a T lymphocyte with specific receptors that are complementary to these specific antigens can bind to the antigens on the antigen presenting cell and that will activate the T lymphocyte. And we know how important that is because T lymphocytes are needed to activate the B lymphocytes. So ultimately we can produce antibodies. Don't forget as well that antibodies will increase the rate of phagocytosis because antibodies can actually bind to antigens on the pathogen, clump pathogens together in a process called agglutination. And then phagocytes can do this process, but engulf and destroy multiple pathogens at one time. So this is really just the start of the immune system story. Do stay tuned because both on TikTok and YouTube, as we go through the next week, we're going to be posting more about the specific immune response. So I'll make sure to also cover your T lymphocytes and your B lymphocytes. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. Do let me know in the comments if there's any other topics you want me to do these longer explainer videos on to help you with your A-level biology.